You ready to get started? Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to introduce this session. I'd like to welcome everyone to Strength Training for Chronic Shoulder and Neck Issues. If you have never been to one of Dr. Osar's seminars, you are in for a treat. And I have a feeling a lot of people are back for the second and third time. Uh, that is one of the reasons I am monitoring your class, Evan, because I love hearing you speak. So during this session today, you will discover the single most common underlying factor contributing to chronic shoulder and neck issues. Your host is Dr. Evan Osar. Dr. Osar is an international speaker, author, and expert on assessment, corrective exercise, and functional movement. He has authored multiple books on these subjects, and he has also developed the industry's most advanced training certifications, the Integrative Corrective Exercise Instructor and the Integrative Movement Specialist. So without further ado, Dr. Evan Osar. Thank you so much. I appreciate everyone that's being on live, and if you're watching the recording, thank you for allowing me to share this information with you. I want to start with a story about my client, Kathy and her husband, Frank. Now, this is not Kathy and Frank because they didn't give me, give me their permission to share their pictures. However, Kathy and Frank, they first came to me or I first consulted with them online about eight weeks ago. Kathy is in her mid 60s. Kathy and Frank are in their, I should say, late 50s. They're in their late 50s. Kathy had surgery on both shoulders. She has a history of about 10 years of chronic shoulder issues. She's been through physical therapy for two years for both shoulders since her surgeries. She lives in chronic pain, neck pain, bilateral neck pain, worse on the right, bilateral shoulder pain, worse on the right. In four sessions, she started saying, wow, I feel a significant difference in my shoulders. And last Wednesday, unfortunately, we do not live in the best area of Chicago. And in fact, some of the protests that are going on is happening right down the riots of the looting and everything is happening right down in the neighborhood where we live. So yes, yeah, we're in the heart of it. And last Wednesday, before this ever began, I go out to my car to, to come to the office and there's a car smashed into my car. And there's, the car was running. My wife went out that the car was running and there's somebody passed out in, in the car. And there's no license plates on the car. And so we called 911 and we're waiting for the, the ambulance and the cops to show up. And the ambulance comes and bangs on the door and the guy gets up and just backs off. He's like, oh, he's all dazed. He backs off and just drives away. So yeah, it was a very frustrating way to start the day. And you know, it, it costs us lots of money because you know, our deductible and rental cars and, and all, all, all that is associated with that. However, that day I had, the last session of the day is five o'clock. I'm five to six, I had a consultation with, with, with Kathy and Frank. And Frank said to me, he's like, hey, Dr. Osar, you know, I just want to share with you. So this is, this is about week six or seven that we were working together one time a week. He's like, I came home today and my wife had baked me, me muffins. This has never happened in two years. Usually we come, I come home from work from a full day of work. He, he's actually a doctor himself. He's helping me help Kathy with the exercises. He's like, this is the first time that I haven't had to come home and go right to helping Kathy with her exercises because her neck is so bad, her shoulders are so bad that she actually felt good enough to bake me muffins. So thank you so much for giving, you know, I know we're not there yet, but for giving me my wife back to, on that level. And, and I'm like, Frank, I just had an awful day, you know, a pretty terrible day. Um, you just made my day. And that's why we do what we do because I know you have clients just like Kathy, just like your husband, Frank, that they can't, they don't have the quality of life that they want or need or long for because of chronic issues like shoulder issues. And this information is very personal to me because I also struggled with chronic shoulder issues as well. So I want, I want to share this information with you so you can help clients like Kathy because in physical therapy, they're, they're not bad people. The physical therapy she was going to right before COVID hit where she had to stop going to physical therapy, they were doing exactly the wrong things. It doesn't mean they're bad people, but the, pro the protocol they were using was completely not appropriate for Kathy, hence the reason why she was not getting better and actually getting worse and why I could see her online. And in basically four weeks, four sessions online, not even being able to put my hands on her, she was actually feeling better already. So that's why I'm excited to share this information with you and help you take this information and apply it to your clients. So thanks for being on. This is going to be an amazing session. Now, one more thing, one more lesson I want you to take from this session here is I want you to plant your flag in the ground. I want you to plant your flag in the ground and stand for something. What are you best in the industry at? 
What we're best in the industry at is assessment and corrective exercise. There's no one, no one, no one in the industry that teaches assessment and corrective exercise better than we do. Now, there's people that do other things better than we do, but not assessment and corrective exercise. So before you end the session, I want you to put in the chat box, what are you best in the world at? What do you want your clients to know you for? So that way, why this is important is so that your potential clients can come find you because they're looking. There are people just like Kathy that can't find solutions at physical therapies or chiropractic or the medical doctor or other trainers. They need to find you. Plant your flag in the ground and say, this is who I serve. This is what I stand for. This is how I'm going to best serve you. Okay, now we have three goals. I want to share with you the number one problem that causes chronic neck and shoulder issues because they're actually directly related to each other. I want to take you through a process. And one of the things we'll talk about today a lot is systems. I'm a very system-oriented guy. I wasn't for much of my career, and that was part of my frustration for most of my career. If you, if you heard my keynote yesterday, I was frustrated in practice really until the last year or so, and definitely this year it has been, has been my breakthrough, so to, so to speak. It's because I didn't have a good process. I didn't have a good system. I recommended the book yesterday, James Clear, Atomic Habits. And what he says in Atomic Habits, you don't rise to the level of your goals you fall to the level of your systems. And if you look at any area of your life, any area of your life where you've been extremely successful, maybe it's raising a child, maybe it's building a business, maybe it's um, helping your community out, maybe it's your relationship, anything that you have done and been extremely successful with, you've had a process. And you just don't, you just don't know it, you just have written it down maybe, but you've had a process. And that's how I want you to think about your business and how you work with clients. I'm gonna share with you the integrative movement system, how we work with our clients here so you can take the information and apply it directly to the programs that you're already using with success. Finally, I wanna show you the progressions. How do you progress your clients safely Lost you. Um, we're going to report a we can't hear you. Hey, Dr. Osa, we can't hear you. Your volume's out. All right, let me back up. <laughs> let me back up. Okay, you guys can hear me now. Just give me, somebody give, me, give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Apologize for those last few minutes. So let me back up. Last Wednesday. Somebody, I came out to my car. This is before all, all no, the- no, no, no. Oh, sorry, we got up to progressions. We were up to progressions and then you went out. Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, yeah. cool, all right, so you're good. So we're up through progressions. Now, one of the goals here is I want you to be extraordinary at what you do. You're already extraordinary, but what we want you to do is take your extraordinary level to a whole new level. Now, I love this quote. I don't know who said it, so it's my quote now. You're not born to do extraordinary things. We are born to do the ordinary things extraordinarily well. And when, when you see oh, me do, what you're going to see me take you through during this session is very ordinary things, simple things like alignment, like breathing, like control. But don't overlook the ordinary because it's the ordinary things done extraordinarily well that will allow you to excel and be that specialist for your clients. Now, there's three things that you can do. Um, Guys, could you just please mute yourself? Just make sure you're on mute. Thank you for the reminder. Just mute, mute yourself, please. Thank you, got it. Awesome, thank you so much. There's three ways that you can be extraordinary at what you do. Number one, you can extrapolate. You can read all the information out, out there on research and information about the shoulder complex and then extrapolate the best information. I know what the research says about the shoulder because I've read almost all the research on the shoulder. Number two, experience. You can have a lot of experience of working with individuals with chronic shoulder issues. I've worked in 20, for two, 23 years, I've worked with thousands of individuals that have shoulder issues and help them successfully navigate their shoulder and neck issues. Three, you have personal experience. When I was 16 years of age, I was the same height as I am now, 5'10". My head was this big. Yes, it was this big. I'm a 5'10", 120 pound frame. I weigh about 180 now, so I'm not a, a massive guy. But again, imagine this head on top of a 120 pound frame. So when I played football, football is my favorite sport. I love football. I had the biggest helmet out there because, because I got there late and, and there was only one helmet. It was huge. And I would be running and my head, I was like a bobblehead because my, head, my helmet was going every direction. So that off season, I dedicated myself to lifting weights. 
for my birthday or Christmas that year, I got this book, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Encyclopedia of Modern Body Bodybuilding. That book changed my life. It literally changed my life. I followed Arnold's routine verbatim. Five sets upper chest, five sets lower chest, five sets middle chest, then flies, then dips. 25 sets just for chest, and then it was on to shoulders and tries. I got bigger, I got stronger, and I also experienced my first shoulder injury. I went to my doctor. He diagnosed me with, commonly what they diagnose people with, tendonitis, bursitis. Told me to take medication, take time off. I was 20, 19, 20 years of age. I'm like, that's not happening. So I didn't take any medication. I just worked through it because you can do that when you're young. I worked through it. I got bigger. I got stronger. And my shoulders got worse to the point where I used to be able to do 90 pound seated dumbbell presses. And now at one point back in 2000, maybe eight, nine, I could barely press 10, a 10 pound dumbbell over my head. I didn't understand what labral tears are, but that's a labral tear right there and rotator cuff tear. It creates hypermobility of the shoulder. You can't stabilize your shoulder as well. You can think of the labrum like a suction cup on your shower wall. As if the, the suction cup is whole and it has integrity, you can stick it against the wall and it stays there. But as soon as you tear that suction cup, then the suction cup doesn't hold on the wall and it falls. So the labrum of your shoulder, the labrum of your hip act very similarly. They hold, they sort of support and hold that humeral head in the socket. It's like a suction cup, so then all the muscles control around it. But if you tear that labrum, you lose control. And that's why I, I lost so much size and strength in my shoulders. I've been able to navigate my shoulder labor tears with no surgery. Sorry, Dr. Ozo, you've gone out again, sound wise. No, I can't hear oh, you yet. Somebody keeps muting him. Somebody on that side keeps muting, muting me, I think. Okay, can you hear me yet? So Evan, here's the problem. Yes. I am trying to mute the participants, but for some reason, because of the way the system is set up, I mute you. So mm -hmm. I cannot mute the participants without muting you. So everyone, please be responsible for muting yourselves. Okay, thank you so much. So yeah, just, just please mute yourselves so that way you can, you can hear me. Okay, I hope, I'm not sure where I left off, but I'm gonna keep continuing so we stay on time. So I apologize for these technical glitches. We'll, 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 we'll get it figured out. So just make sure you mute yourself so we can get through this and everybody can hear. Now I love this quote by, I believe it's by Buckminster Fuller. He's the guy who created the geodesic dome down in Disney World. He said, we are all born geniuses, but the process of living degeniuses us. And I love that quote because it really illustrates if you look at my picture of my little niece here at six months of age, here she is at eight, and now she's a beautiful little 10-year-old, about to be 10-year-old. You see her in what position is this? It's a plank position. So what happens is you see her beautiful alignment of a thoracal pelvic cylinder, the ribcage over top the pelvis. You see the beautiful alignment of her shoulder blade. Where is her shoulder blade? It's right here where my finger is pointing. I'm going to send you these slides, so don't worry about it if you can't see it directly. But her shoulder blade is here. It's not squeezed down and back. If you look here at her abdomen, her abdomen is not sucked in, pulled in, drawn in. She's not in posterior pelvic tilt. She's actually in anterior pelvic tilt. So her pelvis is neutral. Now, that does not look like the plank that we've been taught. It does not look, look like the planks that we have been taught to teach our clients. So why does our plank look so different than my little niece when she didn't know anything different but how to plank naturally? Because I'm going to teach you exactly how to plank like that and how this will solve shoulder problems and this will also solve neck problems as well as low back problems. Now, why do some of your clients have shoulder problems to begin with? It really comes down to one thing, one word. It's about their habits. It's how they stand. It's how they sit and work at their computers. It's how they even do exercises. Because when I first went to physical therapy for my, for my shoulders, they kept having me do a whole lot of what kind of exercises? Retraction, depression. They're like, oh, so, you know, Evan, you have forward shoulder position. So retract and depress. Bring your chest up, squeeze down and back. And I got awesome at squeezing down and back. I got awesome at retraction. I could do chin ups with weights around my waist. I could do the whole lat pull down stack. I could do dumbbell rows with 100 pound dumbbells. I used to be able to do it. I sound like my father. Like, son, when I was your age, I used to be able to, you know, I kind of sound, sound like that guy but I was really strong and then I got really injured and now I can't do anything like that anymore. But they taught me tons of retraction work. And I'll tell you right now, exactly what we saw with my niece just a little while ago, retraction is not the answer. Retraction is not the answer. 
is also because we listen to these individuals. We listen to CrossFitters and bodybuilders and power lifters. And they're, they're amazing individuals. Like I look at pictures and videos of, of CrossFitters online. I'm like, these, these, these are amazing athletes. I love looking at bodybuilders. I used to do bodybuilding. I know you can really tell that right now. Um, but I love bodybuilding, power lifters. I love strength and, and muscles and big people. But that's also what destroyed my shoulders. And I want you to look at this picture right here, this guy doing this bench press. And I want you to think about what happens when you are trying to lift the most amount of weight off your chest, like power lifters are trying to do. So what do you do when you're trying to lift the most amount of weight off your chest? You do what? Chest up, squeeze down and back, because you want to limit the distance of how far you need to move the bar. And then you squeeze your shoulder blades down and back, you pack your shoulders, so that way you have to move the bar as little as possible. Now, what happened in physical therapy? They looked at the biggest, strongest individuals. What do they do to be big and strong? Let's do the same thing in therapy. So what do we teach people to do in therapy? Chest up, squeeze down and back, but realizing that this is not optimal for shoulder health. It's optimal for lifting massive loads off your chest. But I wanna ask you a question. How many power lifters do you train? How many times do you actually do a barbell bench press with your clients? If you're training power lifters, you train them to do that. But if you're training for shoulder health, don't train them to do that. Okay, so that's the importance of understanding where you're getting your information from. Are you training for performance or are you training for shoulder health? Because they're not always synonymous. You can train for performance and also train shoulder health. You just can't do stuff like that and hope your shoulders are gonna just sort of work out and be well. Okay, so we're gonna talk about three areas of the body, scapula and thorax, how the shoulder blade sits upon the rib cage because without the rib cage being in the right position, your shoulder will not be in the right position. We have to talk about the shoulder blade and the neck. If your neck is not in the right position, so think about your clients now. How many clients have the forward, the forward head position? If their head is off, their shoulder is off. If their shoulder, head and shoulder are off, they're gonna have shoulder problems at some point in their life. And also how the neck relates to the thorax, because if your head's forward, then your thorax is probably off, or you have to do something with your thorax and your rib cage to adjust for your head. So we have to look at all three areas, head and neck, rib cage, as well as the shoulder complex itself. Now, I love this picture. I'm gonna bring you in real close. Take a screenshot of this. This is an amazing picture because it shows you a few things. What do you notice right away? What strikes you right away about this image? Type it, in, type it into the chat box. What is the first thing that you notice about this image right here of this little baby girl? It's not my niece, but it's my next favorite picture besides my niece's pictures. You see the rib cage completely stacked up above her pelvis. We refer to that as a thoracopelvic cylinder because it looks like and acts like a cylinder, a flexible cylinder. And her head and neck are completely aligned with her thoracopelvic cylinder as she looks down at her toy cell phone, which will be very quickly a real cell phone. <laughs> these, little, these little kids know how to use cell phones better than I do. Now, what do you notice about her shoulder, however? Her shoulder is where? It's actually forward. So if the forward shoulder is not the problem, would you agree with me? Her shoulder is forward. You have to bring the shoulder forward to get your arms out here to do what she's doing with this toy cell phone. The forward shoulder is not the problem. So if that's not the problem, then what is the problem? It is how your clients are getting the shoulder forward. Because here's my client right here, my 65 year old client with shoulder pain and neck pain, the forward head, the forward shoulder, the increased thoracic kyphosis. And you notice here, how does he get his shoulder forward, which is different than how she gets her shoulder forward. Let me bring you in here a little closer again. What's the difference in how he's getting his shoulder forward compared to how she's getting her shoulder forward? She's moving her shoulder, wrapping the shoulder around the rib cage. He is bringing his shoulder up and over his rib cage. This is what people used to see that would make them, hey, you need to depress and retract your shoulders. But I'm gonna share with you that why that doesn't actually work very well for a lot of your clients. So again, the important component I want you to take away from this slide is that we want the shoulder to wrap to come bring your arms forward, not come over, not to anteriorly tilt to come forward because that's what's happening to your clients. That's what's leading into their issue. That's the habit that's creating so many neck and shoulder issues. Now, that's your older clients. Right? Older is relative. So, so it could be your, your, your younger clients, but relatively speaking, it's your 60 to 70 to 80 year old clients. Now, what if, you, what if you have younger clients? And what about you? Those of you that are young, healthy, active individuals, you do something different. 
This is my client, Jen. Jen came in with shoulder and neck problems as well. She actually teaches acro yoga or you know, yoga with the straps. She's a former gymnast. What is she doing that's very different than what our older clients do? Let me bring it in here close. What you're going to see with Jen is she is hyperextending in her thoracolumbar junction, the area between her lowest rib cage and her upper back. Her head and shoulder are actually forward. I'm gonna step away here just for a moment and bring you over here. Sorry about this, if it's making you a little dizzy. Here's what Jen is doing. Here's what most of us have been doing is we have been taught to do this. We have forward head and forward shoulders. So what do we do to correct that? We lift the chest up. And if you just look at my head and shoulders, you're like, oh, Dr. Rosa, your, your head and shoulders are in good alignment. But if I put my rib cage back to where it belongs, you see I have forward head. And what I did, what I said to Jen is, She's like, oh, my head and shoulders are forward. So I said, correct your head and shoulders. So she did this. I'm like, but now your rib cage is flared. Put your rib cage back, but now my head and shoulders are forward. Fix your head and neck, or head and shoulders. And she kept fixing it by hyperextending through her mid back. So that's the importance of not also, or also for those of you watching this or watching the recording, as a health and fitness professional, you've been trained very similar to how Jen's been trained. Chest up, squeeze down the back, arch your back, pull your abs in, and I'm telling you, that is directly creating neck and shoulder issues. Because what age did Jen start having neck and shoulder issues? 30s, maybe even 20s. What age did, did my client earlier have problems? 60s. So even though this is not optimal, and this actually looks more optimal, this one actually causes issues way before the issue of forward shoulders and kyphotic posture because this has been hammered in by repetition and load. And that's why many of you are experiencing chronic neck and shoulder issues and why your active population struggles so much with neck and shoulder issues. And this is the biggest habit we have to change in our clients that have chronic neck and shoulder issues and have been working hard on their posture. I'll give you more examples of that as we go along. Now, this is as technical as this really gets, is your right shoulder blade, if you're looking at your client facing this way, so imagine you're looking at my right shoulder blade, should be a few inches away from the spine, that's not as important, but it should be slightly upwardly rotated. And that's where, I'm gonna put the scapula right in your screen here. This is the right scapula, the scapula should be slightly upwardly rotated. So I'm gonna bring Janice over. Janice, come on out. Just say hi to everybody. Hi everybody. She's got the big hair on because it's real hot and humid in her office with no EC. So she's got, she's got the big hair on. So let me bring you guys a little bit closer. So if you're looking at your client, your client's scapula should be relatively in this position right here. So this is the superior angle. So that little angle right here is a superior angle. This is the inferior angle. And the inferior angle should be slightly away from midline compared to the superior angle, okay? So that way it should be relatively flush on the rib cage, but not Pull your shoulder blades down and back. Not like that, not locked in, relax. It should be in upward rotation and it should be nice and loose. So her shoulders should be nice and loose on her rib cage because a lot of us have been taught to squeeze down and back and now that shoulder blade is locked on the rib cage where if I try to move her shoulder, the, her whole body moves, okay? So relax it because what happens is when she brings her arm overhead, we'll talk about this in a moment, the scapula should wrap more around the rib cage and go into more upward rotation and posterior tilt. We'll talk about that in a moment. Okay, thank you. Janice, I'll be back in a moment. So this is what it looks like on my client and you just saw it on Janice. Now, what happens to our clients with the forward shoulder? The forward shoulder is technically downward rotation and anterior tilt. So the ideal position is upward rotation and posterior tilt. The Forward shoulder is downward rotation and anterior tilt. Do not worry about the words. Come back here, Janice, if you would, please. Don't worry about the words. Don't get caught up in the words. The words, I'll give you these handouts, no worries. What I want you to focus on is the position. Downward rotation, so this is upward rotation. Downward rotation is this. Anterior tilt, if you could just turn to the side a little bit. Anterior tilt is that right there. That's the position we see and what we call the forward shoulder. I'm just putting words to what you see in your clients. It's downward rotation and posterior tilt. Now, I want you to do this with me. Put your shoulder in downward rotation, so put it down and anterior tilt it. And now bring your shoulder over, try to bring your shoulder overhead. And what happens very soon, 
you get impingement right here. And that's what's exactly happening to your clients. They're in downward rotation and anterior tilt, and then they get impingement, rotator cuff impingement, as they try to bring their shoulder up overhead. So let's go back here one more time, Janice. So we want the scapula to be in upward rotation. So this position here, turn to the side, and posterior tilt, which is this position here, not anterior tilt, which is that position there. Okay, cool. That's as hard and as complicated as it needs to get, but you need to understand that because this is why we don't teach our clients to squeeze down and back with their exercises. We'll talk about exercises here in a moment. Bless you. Okay, now these are three clients that have this exact posture. What do you notice in all three clients? Forward head, forward shoulder, forward head, forward shoulder, forward head, forward shoulder. This patient here, he had ridiculous pain down his arm. Nobody was able to help him. He'd been to massage therapist, physical therapist. He'd been to his medical doctor. He was still having nerve pain down his down his arm. Now I said, one thing we need to change on you, George, is we need to change your posture. He's like, oh, I know, I've been really working on my posture. But if you see, he's already been working on his posture and he's driving his ribcage behind his pelvis. I'm gonna draw a line on here so you can see exactly what that looks like. If I bring you in closer here, you'll see that the, the thing that all these gentlemen have in common is the ribcage is back and the pelvis is forward. The ribcage is back the pelvis is forward. His rib cage is back, his pelvis is forward. The more he's trying to correct his posture, the more it straightens out his cervical spine, the more nerve pain, ridiculous pain he has from his neck down his arm. We need to get these clients to bring their rib cage back into alignment. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. That's the biggest challenge we have with shoulder and neck issues. And when you understand that, you'll solve a lot of your clients' chronic neck and shoulder issues because most therapy only focuses on shoulder motion, not what's happening with the neck and not what's happening, most importantly, with the rib cage. So remember that, that when you're in the plank position or loaded position, your scapula should be in upward rotation and posterior tilt. And this is where my client's, my client, <laughs> she's not my client, she's my niece. My niece's shoulder is right here on her rib cage. If you look at my client here who has rotator cuff pain, you see he's in complete downward rotation and anterior tilt. This is him doing a wall push-up. Now he does tons of push-ups on the floor. And he's wondering why his shoulders hurt. Can you see why your shoulders will hurt? Because I just had you guys do that with downward rotation and anterior tilt. It will create impingement syndromes every single time. This is a client that called me up. He's like, this, we were doing consults years ago, Zoom consults years ago. He called me up. He's like, my physical therapist has me doing this exercise. So I'm like, let me see. You need to pop your shirt off and turn around. So he's doing a band retraction exercise. If you look at his right side, what do you see? You see the complete downward rotation. You see complete depression. You see this big slope in his shoulders. He's squeezing down and back. It's not helping him. It's actually creating, directing more shoulder problems. This is why his shoulder did not get better because the, the exercise was not appropriate for his client. So you may be asking, why did the physical therapist have him doing it? And I don't have a great answer for you because obviously he or she was not looking at what the scapula was doing. And this is what's happening to your clients underneath their shirts. I just have the advantage of being able to have my clients take their shirts off appropriately, right? And see clients in tank tops. I have my women wear tank tops and sports bra so I can actually see their scapula and palpate their scapula because that's within my scope of practice. But I can see this happening. You don't see it because your clients are all clothed. They're, they're probably wearing shirts and sweatshirts and things like that. You don't see this happening, but this is what's happening. This is what's contributing to chronic tightness and or discomfort. We're gonna answer questions at the end. So yeah, so just kind of hold your questions. We got almost 100 people on. That's amazing. Thank you guys for being on. Now, I'm gonna show you a video here. This is, a, generally speaking, how the shoulder should work. Let me bring it in here close so you guys can see this. So let me just play this here. So this is, generally speaking, what should happen when your arms go overhead. This guy looks vaguely familiar, somewhat like me. Now, if you notice, there's no retraction, there's no depression, but I've had to work on this a lot because remember, I told you, for years and years and years, everything was teaching me from the time I started doing Arnold Schwarzenegger's program back in the 80s to all the physical therapy I went through taught me how to do retraction and depression. And I want you to really notice what happens when I go out to the side and overhead. My scapula come up into more upward rotation and posterior tilt, and watch what happens when they come down. Oops, sorry. What happens when they come down? When they come down, 
They are controlled. They don't crash down. So they go up overhead with control. They come back down with control. So what we don't want to see is we don't want to see the scapula crashing back down. Now, my brother-in-law asked me to look at his shoulders. I don't like to look at family members because they don't ever do what you ask them to do, or rarely. So I want you to look at my, my brother-in-law's shoulder position to start with. So he's got right-sided shoulder pain. What do you see on the right side? Where's his scapula? It's already in downward rot rotation. Both scapula are in downward rotation. Do you see this big slope in his shoulder? It's also depressed. He had also been to physical therapy. Guess what they taught him to do? Scapular depression and retraction. So the scapula, which should be like here, is actually down here and down here like that. So he's already starting out in a non-optimal position. Now, I want you to watch the very first motion my brother-in-law does when he goes to bring his arms overhead. The very first motion. What's the very first thing he does? Let me back that up just a little tiny bit. What's the very first thing he does? when he starts going overhead he retracts there's only one reason you would retract because that's not a natural motion because when you bring your arms overhead you should bring your scapula away from midline not towards midline there's only one reason he knows to retract when he lifts his arm and that's because he was taught this oops sorry about that but that's not even his worst issue i mean it's part of his issue it's not his worst issue it's what happens, because if you look at that, you're like, hey, his shoulders look pretty good, because he gets upward rotation and posterior tilt. But I want you to watch, as soon as he starts bringing his arms back down, what happens as soon as he starts bringing his arms back down? Oh my goodness. I got, I'll get this here. There we go. Thanks for your patience. As soon as he brings his arms back down, you see that crash. The scapula goes rapid right back down. Why does that happen? It's because it's not a strength issue. His issue is not a strength issue, it's a motor control. It's what his brain is teaching the muscles to do. And we, if you watch him do a forward flexion motion, you'll see his, his arms come up overhead. And when he comes back down, you'll see this crazy winging in his shoulder because he's losing the ability to stay in upward rotation and posterior tilt. He's doing just the weight of his arms. Imagine he's in your exercise class using dumbbells in his hands to do front raises or side raises. What's gonna to happen to this? Does this get better or worse? And you, you know the answer, it gets worse. And this is why so many exercises can jack your client's shoulders up when they don't have optimal alignment and control. And if you're taking notes, please write this down. Most shoulder issues are not strength issues. Your clients do not need to strengthen their retractors and depressors. Most shoulder issues are motor control issues. It's how the brain is organizing, controlling the muscles around the head, the neck, the scapula, and the thorax. If you try to use strengthening exercises to improve a motor control problem, you're going to get more of what he already has. And that's why physical therapy fails so many clients, because they're trying to use strengthening exercises to change a motor control issue, a brain to muscle connection issue. I'm gonna share with you exactly what to do about this, because this is exactly what I did to address my own shoulders is exactly what Janice used to address her chronic migraines. It's exactly what we use with our clients to address chronic shoulder and neck issues. So recap, most, most issues around the shoulder are because of your client's habits. Your client's habits generally, generally are. They lose control of their head, neck, and thorax, and then they bring their shoulder forward. Some of your clients that have postural awareness will start to hyperextend. They'll bring their pelvis forward and their rib cage back but the shoulder is still relatively forward, the head and neck are still relatively forward. Then, then they'll try to change it by packing the shoulders down and back, but that just creates more stiffness, more rigidity around the shoulder complex. We want to restore optimal upward rotation and posterior tilt of the shoulder, which is basically just the ideal, the optimal position of the shoulder complex for posture, for life, for exercise. Now, hopefully that made sense. And if it didn't, you can always review this. Now, what do we do about it? Because that's great knowing this information, but it doesn't help you with your clients. Now we're gonna show you what do you do with your clients. The integrated movement system, as I mentioned, is a process. It's a strategic process of how we work with our clients. It's a three-step process. Discover, you discover, you use your assessment to discover your clients' suboptimal or non-optimal and inefficient 
posture and movement habits. These are the habits that contribute to chronic tightness, discomfort, and inability to perform it at the level your clients need to and or want to. The address phase is your corrective exercise. That's where you use your corrective exercises to help you create, establish, develop more optimal and efficient habits. The habits that, that you then, in step three, integrate into the fundamental pushing and pulling patterns. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that here in a few moments. But first, we have to assess. Remember, what's the goal of assessment? You assess to determine your client's habits, the non-optimal and inefficient habits that are leading to chronic tightness, discomfort, or not being able to perform at the level your clients need to and or want to. I'm gonna give you two simple, three simple assessments. These are so simple, you can do them in, in minutes, okay? So, I'm gonna step over here, I'm gonna do them on myself. Because, because you do it on yourself as well as, we're, as I'm taking you through this, so that way you feel yourself, okay? Now, you can, what's great about this is you can do this in your exercise class as well. So that way, if you train three, four, five, ten people in your class, you have them go through the same assessment on themselves. Assess, assessments are also, also important so that you know what happens after your exercise because your exercises should improve range of motion, control, stability, and actually help your clients feel better. They should not cause your client to lose range of motion or stability or feel worse afterwards. Okay, so first assessment, arms straight next to your body. Arms by your, does this help explain why? Oh, we'll answer questions at the end. So, so yeah, just write your questions. I'll, I'll try to get to as many as I can at the end of the session. Arms by your side. I want you to wrap your left hand around your right side of your ribcage, kind of like this. Just to monitor your ribcage. Arms straight, keep it right next to your head, go straight up overhead. Now, that's as far as I can go. So that's about 150 degrees of flexion. So this is where I am. I want the arm close to the head. Most of your clients will be out here like this. Get the arm close to the head. I can get more range of motion if I do what? If I hyperextend at my thoracolumbar junction. But if I put my ribcage back, you see where my range of motion is. So about 150 on the right. And this is very common for clients that have rotator cuff tears and labral tears. Re reverse it. Right hand goes over the left chest. This is just monitoring your ribcage. Now we'll go on this side. Ugh. Not good on this side. It's worse on this side. So I have about 140 degrees or maybe 130 degrees. This is 90 right here. About 130, somewhere in there. So I want you, if you're following along with me, which I hope you are, because you're in your house, I want you to follow, do exactly what I do. I'm gonna show you the exercise that I'm going to do to address my shoulder. But just remember where my shoulder is. It's got about 130. I can get more if I do that, right? I can hyperextend and it kills my back. It's another reason why your clients have low back pain is because they're not, they don't have shoulder range of motion. They're trying to get it from the back. So, that, so for someone like me, overhead pressing is not a great exercise. I'll show you some variations for that in a moment. So again, assess, assessment number one, shoulder flexion. Make sure you, you do it with good form. Assessment number two, shoulder rotation. So I'm gonna come out to the side. So I would do this lying down, but I'm gonna do it standing up because some of you train classes. So you can't have your clients lie down or some of your clients can't get on the floor. You can do it standing up. The challenge with standing up is your clients will cheat more, they'll compensate more. So you just have to be more careful with the observation. So 90 degrees of elbow bend, 90 degrees of shoulder abduction. So my elbows are 90 degrees and my shoulders are 90 degrees. Now, first motion, external rotation, fingers up towards the ceiling. And if you notice, I do not have any external rotation limitations. In fact, you should have about 90 degrees. I have about 100 degrees. Guess what they had me do a whole lot of in, in therapy and rehab? External rotation work. They're like, oh, you're tight out here. Stretch this. Work this. Guess what? I got lots of external rotation. Actually, if you look at this shoulder, I got about 120 degrees. Now, let's check internal rotation because everything out here is internal rotation. If you don't have it, you will compensate. So let's go back to our 90-90 position. So now, go slow with this. That's internal rotation, that's all I got. How many degrees is this? You should have about 45 to 70 degrees of internal. I have about 10 to 20, that's being generous. On this side, same thing, about 10 degrees. I can get more if I do what? Throw my shoulder up and forward. I can get a lot more, but that's cheating. Here, I can get a lot more. Real, true internal rotation is about 10 to 20 degrees. I should have 45 to 70, but that's what happens when you have labral tears and rotator cuff tears. Now tell me, should I have been stretching my chest and everything out here or should, and shrinking back here, 
or should I have been stretching and lengthening back here and actually teaching my shoulder how to be in a better position? Because most of your clients have lost internal rotation of their shoulders. So what happens is everything out here is internal rotation. You're working on your key keyboard. If you don't have the ability to be here and bring your arms this direction, because you don't have internal rotation, what do you do? Oh, right here. Then you're here. And this is your clients working at a keyboard. And then you say to your client to do what? I've done this too. I've done everything I'm telling you to do. I've done it to myself. I've done it to my clients. You do what? Chest up. Okay, that's better, but I can't reach my keyboard. I got these I got dinosaur T-Rex arms. So what do you do? Ah, oh, there we go. Now I'm on my keyboard. Chest up and shoulder blades back but now I can't reach my keyboard. Now I can. So it's the compensation for the lack of internal rotation that ultimately drives a lot of your client's shoulder problems and ultimately what leads into their neck problems. Because as you do this, this will also lead into your neck problems. Again, I went through that kind of quick, but I want you to do that on yourself. Some of you may have external rotation limitations. So you just keep doing what you know how to do. But if it hasn't been working, maybe take a closer look at your assessment. So again, we did overhead lane. We did external internal rotation. Now the second, that's your assessment. So we found some non-optimal habits in me. Now let's look at the address phase. Now you have to use your soft tissue release, your myofascial release tools. You're gonna to use your correct exercises to help your clients create more optimal habits. And then we're gonna integrate that into the fundamental pushing and pulling patterns, both horizontal as well as vertical. I'll show you some variations of that. So I'm gonna bring you back to the backside of our lab here. As I said, no AC in here, so a little sweaty and warm. Now, the tool we use most frequently with our clients in our office is the roll go. We make no money by telling you to use the roll go. Okay? We use the roll go. We sell the roll go here because we love this. This one release I'm about to share with you, this is what sold me on the roll go. And then I found other uses for it, but this one release sold me on the roll go. Our clients love this. Tool, so that we're like, where can you get it? We're like, all right, go to Amazon, go to Rolga. And then we're like, why should we send them there? We'll carry it here in our office. We love this, your clients will love this. If you don't know it, R-O-L-L-G-A. Now here's the key. You're going to place this. What muscles stop you from going overhead? What are the muscles that stop you from going overhead? It's not the muscles out here. It's the muscles where? Back here. What does it teach me a whole lot of in therapy? Squeeze, retract, grow, depress chest up, so everything back here got tight and short. Hence the reason why I created rotator cuff and labral tears, why I have limited range of motion. So now we're gonna do release underneath here, the lat attachment as it comes from here, up and underneath your arm to insert into the front side of your shoulder. Terry's major, Terry's minor, right underneath here. This is where a lot of your clients need release where they're not getting release. So the Rolga is gonna go right against your shoulder blade, right against your upper arm, I'm gonna have Janice, come over, just make sure I'm in view of the camera. How you position yourself on the roller is key as well. If you don't have a roller, then just use a regular foam roller. That works. This just works better, okay? So now, I'm going to align myself over top the roller. I'm going to get myself aligned, my thoracic pelvic cylinder aligned, and now I'm put my shoulder right in the crease of the roller, the valley. My elbow's out in front of my body, so this is how it looks from behind. My head and neck are aligned and long. Then I'll turn around and do from the front, okay? So that's what it looks like from behind. And if you angle me down just a little bit, Janice, and angle me this way just a little bit. There you go. So the elbow's out here in front. And again, rib cage is aligned, head and neck are aligned. So now I'm going to push my elbow lightly down into the table. Lightly is key here. The lighter, the better. For a count of five, four, three, two, one, and then it's just a couple inches off the table. It's not all the way up here, a couple inches off the table. Hold, and then breathe into this side of your rib cage. The same side you're releasing, breathe into that side of your rib cage. And then breathe out. Sorry, breathe in, and breathe out. Just tell me to breathe through my nose, because Jesus is gonna be talking about breathing later on, and we're gonna talk about nose breathing. We talked about that also on Thursday. Five breaths. Release, we're gonna do it one more time, okay? Long spine, stack that rib cage, stack the knees, push down lightly for a count of five, four, three, two, one. Reach up just a couple inches, hold for five breaths. 
nice and easy, nice and slow. You're going to feel a lot of tenderness back there if you're doing this with me. It will get better over time. Slower, release the breath. Remember, it's not how high you lift the arm, it's just keeping the arm steady. And then relax. Now you've done your myofascial release. You've done it on your tighter of the two sides. If I had more time, I would do the other side, but I did the tighter on my two sides. Now, once you've done your release, now you have to go into some pattern that's gonna help you activate those muscles, activate the upward rotators and the posterior tilters to get the shoulders back into this position here. Every time you do a release, you do an activation pattern right after. So we're gonna do the band pullover. It's one of our go-to exercises for the shoulder. Can you grab a band, please? Use your lightest band possible because if you use a heavy band, your client will strain and try to struggle to get the band pulled apart. Use the lightest band possible. So now you want the shoulders to go wide, not down the back, but wide in this direction. I'm gonna grab the band about shoulder width apart here. Turn the palms together, facing each other. Wrists are straight, wrists are straight. Now I bring the band into my chest, then I'll lie down on my back. So here we go. I support the head and neck with a towel. I don't need a lot of towel, but I do need some towel. I pull my neck long. I align my rib cage over top of my pelvis. I grab my band about shoulder width apart. Light tension, turn the palms in. Knuckles are facing up towards the ceiling at this point. Bend the elbows down, pull that tension apart, hold that and breathe. I'm gonna do five breaths. So I'm using my shoulders, keeping open and wide. I'll do this sitting up too, so you, so you can see it sitting up. I'm gonna breathe, and then breathe out through my nose. I'm trying to breathe up in between my shoulder blades. Denise will talk about this later on as well. You wanna breathe between your shoulder blades because your clients are not breathing into their back and the scapula should sit on that thorax. You want the scapula to sit on the thorax. So breathe in between the shoulder blades across your collarbones, as well as breathing down that direction as well. So it's three-dimensional breathing. Five breaths and then relax and let go. And this will be very fatiguing for your clients initially. What we don't wanna see is we don't wanna see the elbows flaring out to the side, okay? So Janice will show you from the side as well, or I should say from the top, down, so it's here, pull that band apart, palms facing in, knuckles go up towards the ceiling. Now we're gonna do pullovers. We're gonna breathe in, and as we breathe out, arms go back overhead. Elbows not out here like this, elbows not locked in here like this. Elbows are relaxed, slide the band back towards your forehead, and then breathe in to bring the band back over your chest. Breathing in, and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. And usually we'll do about five repetitions. Do not do too many. Remember, lighter and slower is better than heavy and fast in, in correct exercise. And then relax, okay? Now, when you're done, I want you to recheck your range of motion. So I'm gonna recheck my right side. So again, rib cage, hand over the rib cage. I'm gonna check my right side. Right side range of motion, much better. I didn't even release my right side. That's gotten better just from the corrective exercise. Left side, that's my more restricted side. Much different. Remember what I had before, about 140, now I have about 160 to 170 degrees. That's how effective corrective exercise is when you do the appropriate exercise and use the right strategy. It's assess, release, and then activate to restore optimal upward rotation posterior tilt. Now I need to teach you how to, I'm gonna show you a few patterns of how you integrate this. You said, wow, Rosemary, <laughs> yeah, wow, that's awesome. I, I can't tell you, I can't stress how important the cycle, the, the strategy is, not the exercise. It's about the strategy. Now, let me show you how to integrate this into a few patterns before we take some questions. We have about 12 minutes left. So let me move the table here.
Now, one of the patterns that we love to do with our clients, obviously you can't do this at home unless you have a TRX or suspension straps, is a TRX suspension row. Here's why we like this, because clients of every level, my oldest clients, my clients with Parkinson's MS, they all do this pattern. Here's why this pattern is so great, because it teaches you upward, upright pulling. It teaches you grip strength. Your clients need grip strength. So it teaches them how to grip and hold their wrist more neutral. It teaches them how to stabilize the shoulder on top of the rib cage. However, how you set your clients up makes all the difference. So I'm gonna have Janice back the camera up just a little bit. Camera, the, the computer up. We're always gonna start with our principles of the integrative movement system. Alignment, breathing, control. Always set your clients up for success before they ever lock into an exercise. So the first thing I'm going to do is long spine. I'm going to pull it up from the back side of my head and neck, long through the rib cage. Ribs should be angled down this direction, not flared up like this. Angled down, long spine, shoulders open and wide like this. Shoulders open and wide like this. Not down and back like this, open and wide. Okay. Now from here, actually I'm going to do it with the handles in my hand. I'm going to grip the handles, use my thumbs, long spine, long rib cage. Now I come back because this is going to be the ending position of my row. I'm already set up for success. If you just have your clients walk up, grab the handles, and come in here like this, and then you're like, hey, chest up, squeeze out of back, then they're in this position. But if you set your clients up first, long, long, bend the elbows, walk back. Now I'm already set up. This is the ending position of my row. Now I can just walk my legs down. So now I'm set up, long spine, Rip cage stack with my pelvis, control the eccentric phase, and then control the concentric. Do not pull this way. Pull open and wide, release, pull open and wide, release, pull open and wide. So this is the proper way to do a suspension body weight row. So that way you're reinforcing. You see this position here is the same position as this position here, release eccentric. Control, concentric, release, eccentric, control, concentric, and then walk back up, and then you're still in the same position. So that way you're reinforcing posture and your movement strategy. So that's your horizontal sort of pulling. Now, what about your horizontal pushing, like a push-up? So again, it's gonna start the same exact way. We're gonna align the thoracopelvic cylinder, long spine, head, thorax, step above the pelvis. And now I'm going to hinge. So this is how you do an elevated push-up. Hinge, arms on the bar here. Push the bar this way. So I'm pushing the bar this way and this way with my hands. So that way I stay open and wide across my collarbones. So long spine, stack the rib cage on top of the pelvis, hinge, push. Now I'm aligned. And now all it is is bend the elbows. Stay here, bend the elbows. Now push that bar away from you. Push the bar away. Stay aligned. Push that bar away. Stay aligned. Push that bar away. That's your push up. And then the push up on the floor is the exact same thing. Now, let me show you two more patterns. I, just, I gotta show you how to do a high to low push and pull because your clients that have limited range of motion shouldn't be doing straight vertical pushing. You need to modify their pushes and pulls. So, this is how you modify it. Now, before I go on, I need to recheck my range of motion, make sure that I didn't lose range of motion. Still there. Because I aligned, I breathed, I controlled through my exercise. Your exercises should not cause you to lose range of motion. So the best exercises for your clients with limited range of motion, angled pulls and angled pushes. But again, it starts the exact same way. Align the head and neck. Align that rib cage on top of the pelvis. Grab the handles, step back. Now, I can keep my TBC aligned. I use the left arm to stabilization arm. Pull, release, pull, release. Do not over pull the elbow back because then the shoulder goes forward. So stay open and wide. Jeez, can you just uh, come out into me? So it's here, open and wide. Pull, release. Pull and release. I'll do it from the backside now. Long spine. Stack the ribcage over the top of the pelvis. Step back. Hold the stabilization arm. Pull, release. Not over retracting, not depressing. Stay open and wide through the shoulder complex. So that's your angle press for your clients that have a limited overhead range of motion. You can also use resistance bands. I'll show you one last pattern. So, 
you want to do an angled overhead press. Because remember, if your client's range of motion is out here, you can't use a weight, a dumbbell in the hand. Because they're out here like this, this is already creating impingement on my shoulder. It's too much load out here. So you have to angle the weight and make it come from behind the client. So here's how this pattern looks. Same thing, you're gonna align the head and neck with the right of the cylinder. You're gonna grab the resistance, bring it up to the shoulder. So you're here, push up. So again, that's my range of motion I can control. Come back down, press up, come back. So that way I can still train overhead motions, but within the range of motion that I can control. Let's start from the front. Last one, long spine. Stack with the right of the cylinder. Let's grab that weight. Left arm stabilization arm, up and over, open the shoulder up, control the eccentric, up and over, control the eccentric, that's your overhead press. That's how you modify your exercises for your client's range of motion. I'm gonna wrap up and then I'll take some questions. Gonna wipe off the sweat. Obviously, lots, there's lots of additional exercises you can do with your clients. Those are the ones we use most frequently. Obviously, there's many different iterations of those as well. Now, one of the things you want to do also do as a specialist is have your clients avoid exercises that will jack them up. Here are three exercises that will jack your client's shoulders up. Upright row. That will That's the impingement position of the shoulder. Let me get you in here a little closer. That's the impingement position of the shoulder. Right there, this position is, is just reinforcing reinforcing the forward shoulder position and the forward head position. This is a terrible exercise for 90% of people. And this one, remember, if you do not have good shoulder control, that's not a great exercise either, okay? So it's also about avoiding exercises that will jack your client's shoulders and neck up as well. So conclusion, the biggest problem with your client's shoulders is that forward shoulder position and the habits they create around the forward shoulder. The process, the integrated movement system, is a strategic three-step process that allows you to use your assessments to determine your client's non-optimal and inefficient posture and movement habits, which then lead into your corrective exercises to help them create more optimal and efficient habits that lead into the integration. Integrate those more optimal habits into the pushing and pulling patterns. I'm gonna recheck my range of motion again because you should if your client has shoulder problems, you need to keep rechecking your range of motion. And again, still way better than when I started. And I was able to maintain my alignment, my breathing control, which is those new habits being integrated into the fundamental movement patterns. Thank you so much, Susan. I appreciate you being on as well. Also, use the right progressions. Many of your clients are doing exercises that are way too challenging, where they cannot maintain alignment, breathing, and or control. That's why they keep getting chronic neck issues, or chronic shoulder issues, or chronic upper back issues because they're using patterns that just don't facilitate those new habits that you've helped them create. I hope you've learned a lot. My buddy Rusty also has put together a great deal for you. If you do want to get a Rolga, just email Ro Rusty, rusty at rolga.com. Just put in my name, Osar, O-S-A-R. He'll send you a Rolga for $30, which is way cheaper than you can get it on, uh, in, in the U.S. If it's, if it's international, there will probably be additional shipping for you guys, international. But in the U.S., you get a roll up for 30, free shipping handling. Just make sure you say OSAR and let them know that I sent you there to him, okay? Thank you, Roll Rusty and his wife, Dana. They're great individuals doing great things in the industry as well. If you're looking for more information, Jill and I, a lot of fitness professionals reached out and said, hey, we're gonna learn more about anatomy to really truly understand the shoulder and the hip and the core and some of the things you teach in your courses. Jill and I, Jill, my colleague, Two Anatomy Geeks, we created a series, Two Anatomy Geeks. It started out as a joke and people really loved our Facebook posts. So we actually just started a weekly series on Saturdays, Two Anatomy Geeks. Thank you, thank you for being on um, Two Anatomy Geeks. And each week we take a different group of muscles. So like last, the first month we did four module series on the shoulder, covering all the shoulder anatomy, all the muscles we talked about today so that we understand the anatomy. And then also more importantly, how you plug that into corrective exercises so that way you can apply the anatomy that you're learning. 
So that's my fellow geek, Jill, right there. So she showed the anatomy on her skeleton there. Our friend George is actually our third geek. So each module, you get four hours of content. We always go over, so you actually get closer to five to six hours of content. You get Q&A if you're on live, and you also get a four-part shoulder series for free. So right now, we're, and they're all recorded, so if you can't be on live, you get instant access to the recordings. So that's your free bonus is a shoulder one. It's only $49. We're going to price it at $99, but we want to make sure that it's affordable for you guys. Just reach out to help desk at fitnesseducationcenter.com. Tell them that you came through our site here, through the FAI site at the Functional Aging Summit. And that's the link there, but just go to help desk at fitnesseducationcenter.com. And as I mentioned, what I want you to do, what, what your take home from this session is put your, plant your flag in the ground. Let your clients know what you stand for, who you work with, who you're best in the world at working with, so that, you're, that way your potential clients will also know to come and see you, seek you out as the specialist. I want to thank FAI, thank Diane for being the moderator. I want to thank all of you for your time, your energy, and attention for helping to up-level your education, your skill set, your knowledge to be the leaders for our communities because we need leaders more than ever. Now, I'm going to hang around. I know it's your lunch break. I'm going to hang around here for a few minutes because I know you have some questions. So I'm going to have Janice field the questions and just call them out to me. Or, yeah, yeah, just let's do it that way. So if you have questions, just kind of give a shout out on the question Q&A area. Let's see. The Rolga link is rusty, R-U-S-T-Y, at Rolga, R-O-L-L-G-A, dot com. And make sure you put the name Osar in there. Groups, great work. I'm scrolling, you guys. I'm looking for them. There's a lot of them here. So one question we get asked very frequently is, is you teach things so you teach things so differently than, than what people learn in physical therapy. You know, why is that? Why don't physical therapists teach us information? And again, like I said, there's three things that make you an expert. You look at the research, you work with thousands of patients and clients, and you have personal experience, you know? So most of what I learned was through the personal experience of, of just struggling with shoulder pain for so long that I realized that what I was learning was wrong. So it doesn't mean that they're wrong. It doesn't mean that what they're doing doesn't work for some people. It just didn't work for me. It didn't work for Janice. It didn't work for a lot of our clients. And, and that's ultimately what made us develop the integrative movement system. Okay, Evan. So when the, uh, Kirsty asks, so when the humerus head comes forward in a row position, is that mostly because they are holding their shoulders down and back and rowing at the same time, then should they try to wrap the shoulder blades around the rib cage and widen out the shoulders? Yeah, exactly, Christy. That's exactly it. Um, if you could you just come around in this direction. So when your client is rowing, what happens is if they already have the forward shoulder position and they row and they're trying to squeeze down and back, they just keep rowing this direction. So for a lot of clients with shoulder problems, especially me, myself is included, if you notice on my suspension rows, I didn't pull the elbow very far back. Like I didn't come back here into my back pocket. I stopped right here because this allows me to stay open and wide here. You can see I have wide shoulders here. As soon as I come this way, my shoulders start rolling forward. So for the majority of your clients, it's better to stop when the elbow is in line or slightly in front of the shoulder. So that is a much safer position and easier position on the shoulder complex. Thank you for the question. Okay, uh, Adrian asks, how do you feel about overhead presses with light dumbbells for the 60 plus population? Somebody recently told me it's a bad idea. Yeah, it, it, and again, it's only a bad idea if your clients don't have great range of motion. So if you think about your over 60 population, most of them, again, overhead pressing for me with this range of motion, bad idea, because the weight will be way out here in front of my body, I'm gonna create impingement syndrome every single time. That's why the angle band press, let me go grab a band real quick. So another alternative, another alternative to the dumbbell overhead press, have them take a, a light resistance band, step on it with their back leg they're here so again say this is my shoulder range of motion because that's what it is put the band in their hand that's my overhead press that's how they should do overhead press rather than dumbbells because now you can work, work safely in their range of motion and not have it compromise their shoulder their neck and or their low back hope that helped that that's an exercise we use a lot with our clients um, this is a life-changing info. I have chronic neck pain due to deformed T3, and I've been told to stay in retraction by everyone. Almost everybody that we, that we consult with here in our clinic and online 
Every single person has been taught to scapular retract. It will work for some, a small percentage of the population that their only issue is forward shoulder and you just have them retract and then everything else works well. That's a small percentage of individuals that you're gonna see. Most people have been over retracting and over depressing. It doesn't mean you don't retract at all. You just don't over retract and over depress. Evan, are there handouts for this presentation? Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send out these PDFs to you so you'll get them. I don't know exactly how you get them, but you'll, you'll, get, you'll get them. So I'll, I'll send them out to Celia, Celia at FAI and she'll get them out to you. All right, let's see, anybody else pop in? Soft or hard foam, is it a personal preference? So we use, there's, there's three levels of Rolga, soft, medium, hard. I think hard is just too hard, man. I, more is not better. Softer is better. So we go with the mediums. That's the one we use personally. That's the ones we use most frequently. Some of our older clients have to use the soft ones. But again, harder is not better. That's, that's just an, an ego thing. Like I just need somebody to like, get their elbow or something hard in there. We find medium works the best for most individuals. Um. How much can regular chiropractic adjustments, which I believe in, help with poor shoulder movement? Um, one thing, I'm a chiropractor, so of course I believe in chiropractic adjustments. Here's the thing. Uh, if you need a chiropractic adjustment, then you need a, an adjustment. But if you're trying to solve a motor control issue with a chiropractic adjustment, I'm going to tell you 100%, it will not work. It does not work. I've tried for many, many years to make that work. It doesn't work. Chiropractic adjustments with motor control training, spot on. Our, our Integrated movement specialist Melanie out in California works with her husband who's a chiropractor. He gets her, he gets the client loosened up with the adjustment, but she does the motor control training. And that's what makes the difference ultimately in the clients getting better. Um, uh, Maria, thank you so much. Thank you. Those are very kind words. Um, let's see. Anybody else have any questions that I missed? If you, oh, what's this say? I have a client who's in her mid 30s. She has a dowager's hump and has a lot of pain down her left arm. Uh, down her left arm where she's getting tingling and numbness in her fingers. Her major problem is that she is carrying a lot of weight on her chest and pulls everything forward. How can I help her? Um, honestly, a couple, couple things. On um, one, yes, adjustments plus motor control training. Um, Janice, I'm, I'm going to have Janice talk about this really quick. This, this will be the last question. And then just write your questions into help desk at fitness education seminars. Because Janice does have a large chest. She, she has been taught to lift the chest up, <laughs> squeeze down and back. So I want you to talk about how this information applies to you and some of your chronic migraine issues? Uh, well, let's see. Hmm. <laughs> I, I sort of caught off guard there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I will tell you, um, my family has an issue being well-endowed women, and um, my mom always had neck pain, and her doctor's answer for her was to actually have a breast reduction. Um, I am a big believer if you can avoid surgery, do it at all costs, partly because it's my specialty and I work with people post-surgery. So if you can avoid surgery, I, I would recommend it. So I, what I would say is do the best you can, knowing that bras with cause restrictions, having your clients please get out of their bras as much as possible. Most women that we see, their ribs are completely stuck together in the area where their bra strap has been most of their life since they started wearing bras. I started wearing them when I was in fourth grade, so third grade. So it's been there for a long time. However, I will honestly tell you, breathing has saved my life because I too, like my mother, had headaches, migraine headaches from the age of five are related to posture. And I'll talk about that in my next session, this next session, actually, literally. And breathing is the key to helping your clients make changes. Because you have a large chest doesn't mean you have to live in a life of pain, does not mean you have to have forward shoulders. Does that mean you have to have neck pain? Does that mean you have to have headaches? It's understanding what's happening to your body biomechanically as related to that excess weight or forward weight and how to, how to manage that really is what is the key. So I hope that answered your question a little bit. Um, hey, a couple of people are asking about online assessments with Evan. Please reach, reach out. Let me see if I can try to figure out how to do this really quickly. Um, everybody publicly. Okay, I'm putting an email address in there for our practice. It's called assistance at osarconsulting.com. I'm trying to put this to everybody. I don't know if I'm doing it correctly, everybody publicly. I don't know if everybody got that. Nope, that just went to Martha, I apologize. So it's assistance, A-S-S-I-S-T-A-N-C-E at osar, O-S-A-R consulting.com. If somebody knows how to put that in their, 
Thank you, Shelly. You're the best. Thank you, Shelly. <laughs> um, please reach out. Our assistant, Mary, will be happy to help you schedule an online session with Evan. As you can see, he has great success. He's been actually, you know what, his first one ever, long before Zoom even existed, was with a woman who had an extremely large chef. And I say that unbiasedly. It was and she called, she reached out to him because of that very reason, because she did have large, heavy breasts. She was struggling with upper back pain and neck pain. And the doctor's suggestion was a breast reduction. She was a nurse. She was hoping for a better option than that. And that's, that's actually when he started doing those. And that was probably 10 years ago, long before Zoom existed and long before we did life like this. So. So thank you for everyone for being on. Thank you for your energy, your enthusiasm, your questions. If you have questions, remember help desk at fitnesseducationseminars.com. Only use assistance at OSAR Consulting for consultations. If you have any questions about our programs, the ROLGA, just go to helpdesk at fitnesseducationseminars.com. Thank you for all you do for your clients, for our community. Be the leaders that we need today more than ever. And remember the message I shared with you yesterday. It's all about love. Just send out love everywhere, anywhere you can. Thank you guys. Thank you, FAI. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Dan and Cody for creating this organization and this wonderful opportunity to share with like-minded individuals. Let's go get it.